I want to ask you, is Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? And when I say Lord of your life, I mean, do you acknowledge him in every single aspect of your life? Because it's important. Oftentimes what happens to us as believers is we trap God or we barricade God into only certain parts of our heart, certain parts of our life, certain parts of our mind. We say, God, you know what? On Saturday and Sunday, you got me throughout the week. I'm, I'm going to just do my own thing. But what we do is we 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 trap God or we border God into a certain parts of the sin that we live in or the lifestyle that we live. We say, God, you can go into every room of my life except for this one room. God, everything is good for you to to acknowledge uh or everything is good for you to bless me in all these aspects of my life. But there's one specific part of my life that God, you know what? I just need you to stay out of right now. So as, as I get into today's video, I want you to truly meditate on that and, and, and pray to God. God, is there any part of my life that I have not submitted to you? And if, and if it is, then how can it change? Pray that to God. Pray that to God so, so that, way there's, that way there is no hidden parts of your life. Because imagine you let a person into your home, and this is not even a, a good enough example because a person in God is totally different. Different magnitudes, different powers. But let's say you let a person into your home, and you let that person into your home, and you say, you know what? You can only go into half of this house. You can stay here for a whole year, but don't, don't, don't pass this line. I'm going to draw a line in this middle of this house. Don't cross this line. You're only allowed to be on this left side of the house. What you've done is now you, you, you've created a board and you made the person feel uncomfortable. You made the person feel as though, hey, I'm unworthy of, of this relationship that we have or this friendship that we have. Because what, what you've done is you, you've, you've created a line and you say, hey, you know what? Only this side. So imagine how God feels when you say, hey, you are the Lord of my life, but I'm only going to allow you on one side, God. Don't cross over this other line. It becomes a, a, a battle of double mindedness. Let's put it that way. That's the easiest way to put it. Let me read this for you, right? In Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek first. Seek God's kingdom first. In everything I do, I should be seeking God's kingdom first. In my marriage in my family life, in my friendships. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added into you. How many times is there a time where you don't seek God's first? You don't seek God's thought process. You don't seek what God thinks first. You just say, you know what? I think this is the best thing for me. I'm creating a border on what I want God to do in my life. And the main point to why I made this video is Jesus Christ should be the Lord over your life. I mean, he should reign over my life. Every part of life should go through him. And if it does not go through him, then it does not belong in my life. There shouldn't be a point where I listen to secular music throughout the week. And then on Sunday, I'm just listening to worship. It shouldn't be a point to where I'm watching things that are lustful. I'm watching things that are causing me to stumble. I'm going to places that I know I should not be going to. Because what, I, what I'm doing is I'm creating a border on my life. I'm not allowing God to work on every aspect of my life. I'm only allowing God into certain parts of my life. That's being double-minded. Either you're for God or you're against God. And I have to remind myself of this all the time. To humble myself and realize that God should be over every single thing in my life. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, one of my favorite verses, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge him and, she, and he shall direct thy paths. So I have to realize if I acknowledge God in all my ways, then he is the one who makes my path straight. How many times has there been a time where you didn't acknowledge God and you felt as though, you know what? I'm just not going to acknowledge God in this situation because either what, what you knew is, it wasn't of God, it wasn't God's will for you, or the conviction from the Holy Spirit was telling you this is not what God wants you to do. So what you did is you didn't acknowledge God, and then what happened is it backfired on you. 
or if it did go through, you felt the uh, overwhelming conviction of this was not of God. This is not what God desired for me to do. That's why the Bible tells you to acknowledge God in everything that you do, because he continues to make your path straight. But what we do in the sinful nature that we have within us, or the fleshly desires that we have within us, make us not desire the things of God. That's why the Bible tells you to deny oneself daily. This is an endurance. This is a this is a marathon of life where we have to deny oneself and we have to continue to take up our cross every single day of our lives. This is not just a one day or one week battle. This is not just say, hey, you know what, God, every part of my life is yours except for one aspect. My relationship don't really touch you right now. Because is that is that obedience? Is that obedience to God? In Matthew 22, verse 37, it says, love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your mind with all of you love the lord your god love him i get it it's difficult sometimes it's difficult to to to, to be obedient to god in every aspect of your life but obedience is what is what brings the true joy of being obedient to God. How many times have you been disobedient to God and you realize, man, this is not it. I'm practicing this sin and this just is not it. And then what you do is you submit to God. The devil realizes, look, there's no threat here. He's already submitted. She's already submitted. And once you submit out of your obedience, you, it's, it's, it's a it's a different type of peace that you get within your spirit when you are obedient to God. When you humble yourself and submit to God and you realize that he He not only protects you, he guards you, but he answers the prayer through your obedience. And it could just be a small thing. It doesn't even have to be possession, but it could be something that you are battling today. And God answers the prayer and tells you, look, I got you, my child. That I've acknowledged the fact that you're struggling. I'm going to pull you out of it. The Bible says, let no man say that he is tempted by God. God doesn't want you to struggle. God has given you an extra route out. So there's a part of your life that you feel as though today, man, you know what? I'm holding on to this one part of my life and I haven't let go of it. Submit to God. Be obedient. Let God know, you know what, God, I, I repent. Come to God willingly able to give it up. Don't have borders on your life with God. Don't allow God into one part of the house and not the other part. And this is a message that I have to remind myself as well. Every believer has that point where they have to spend time in the word of God, which should be my reflection of who I am. And how far away I come from God or how far I want to draw near to God. The reflection should not be your friend that's living in the world. But what your reflection should be is I should be comparing myself with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way I will grow. Because the Bible says that no man is perfect. The only one that is perfect is Jesus Christ. So if I want to become more like him every day, I have to look at the reflection, which is the word of God. So I pray this message encourages you. I pray this message helps you. Share this with somebody who might need it today. Let God into every aspect of your life. May God bless you and may you have a beautiful day. In Jesus' name.